Okay, hey everybody, welcome back to the Shimmy Show. It is Asian Day. Swadika, Nihama. Oh man, actually I got um, two main like core topics to talk about today. Uh, not really entirely all about Asians, but I guess maybe 50% of the topic could be. It depends on how you want to look at it. Uh, the first topic, I just made note on my pad called, You Take Care of Me. <laughs> you take care of me? You take care of me is a common, uh, it's a common phrase that like bar girls in Southeast Asian countries will uh, say to foreigners. You know, like, you take care of me? You take care of me? You know, uh, you'll hear it in massage parlors as well, too. But, you know, anybody, everybody knows what it means. I'm not getting into that here. Uh, I'm bringing the issue up because I want to use that in relation to discussing NPD, my favorite topic, along with uh, codependency, about how codependent people or your codependent parents can raise you to be a codependent and for you to seek out other codependents in your life. But it goes back to the original quote, you take care of me. Uh, people with MPD or narcissistic personality disorder, they're always looking for somebody to take care of them. And it wasn't until I heard this exact same quote from my own mom, the same quote that I often hear from, could be a bar girl, massage girl, any girl, I guess every girl might want someone to take care of them on some level, or maybe that's a human need or something, but I mean, like, I don't want nobody to take care of me. Fuck. But I mean, it's like uh, the human need of codependency. Let, let's talk about that today. And uh, the second topic, the second Asian topic is my Asian, uh, Asian story part number two, or this will be like part number five or six of my series on uh, OJJDP, ICAC, and Indian country. This time about an airport encounter with what I want to call the world's fattest Asian girl. This is no underestimation in LAX on uh, November 18th, 2014. I had all this documented, of course, come on with my shit. So, uh, yeah, we got a nice little entrapment story to tell in part number two, but part number one, uh, this was related to uh, the Reina Indian girl thing, money, Dorian Peters thing, but we'll get to that in part two. In part one, uh, we're gonna go to the uh, you take care of me story. So let me take this ridiculous hat off. Did I? It's not ridiculous, actually. I got it in Thailand. My first time I actually put it on, actually. It's pretty cool. Very cool. I'm not gonna walk out in the sun or nothing like that or whatever. But, um, stay. Like, um, yeah, so anyway, let, let, let me quit wasting time and get fast forward this here. So, you take care of me. Codependency raise, codependence or raise codependence. Uh, they are born. They, they feel like you're often born to serve. Is what I, a note I left here. Like an example is like when I was very young. Uh, say in my grandmother's house, uh, I'd be visiting for the summer or something. It was very common, and maybe it was common for my mom's generation too, for uh, older generation uh, grandparents and parents and whatever to be like, hey, go go get me a drink of water or whatever. And I couldn't just go and get my grandma a drink of water or a glass of water from the sink. This is like before they put bottle, bottled water and all this. We're talking like the 80s and shit. So people would still go to the tap and drink tap water back in those days, you know. I guess it was better. I don't know. But uh, I couldn't just bring like cold water or even room temperature water to her. She would reject it. I would have to go into the fridge, or the freezer, I'm sorry, and get some ice cubes, get it really cold, let the water run for like, 45 seconds, let it get real cold, then put the ice cubes in, and then bring it to her, and then she'd take the water. And she'd say, thank you, of course. And I was happy to do this, of course, I'm just saying. But I'm bringing this up as like the training module or whatever. So uh, children often were like just shuffled around the house as like little butlers, at least in the South or whatever. Maybe that's common around the world, I don't know. Common or not common, it still trains children to be the servants of adults and elders or whatever. The codependency thing, I'm talking about the, the whole you take care of me, me thing. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't have my kids like order them around to do shit and shit like that. It's, you know, I'm pretty like much like they're autonomous. Everyone can kind of, I can take care of my own shit, you know, it's cool. But I mean, the training that I got growing up was a little different than that. So 
this training of the this training of brought up being able brought up being brought up to serve and to serve and mostly it's women you know aunties uncles aunties grandmamas and mamas and this and that it's like you're you're brought up to serve women and meet women's needs and uh, what this created in me is like a desire to find girlfriend wives dates whatever girls that were basically codependent that needed someone to be their waiter or to be that guy to get them that glass of water or to always be delivering shit or always be that guy you know and it's a very bad habit it's a very bad uh I think this is a really bad thing that I think mostly mothers and maybe fathers too can teach their kids to uh, do that because it, it, it teaches it teaches or it taught me to draw people with you know disorders toxic bad problems all kinds of motherfucking it teaches you to be a problem solver or a problem fixer or a people fixer and uh, the problem with that is you've only got like so much time on the planet here you can't go around like fixing other motherfuckers problems. You can if you want to, but it'll, it'll drain you. It's like you can't work on everybody else's house and neglect your own. You know, you feel what I'm getting at? So, yeah, man. Uh, motherfuckers gotta learn how to help themselves or they'll be codependent forever. And this cycle just perpetuates generation, generation, generation. So, uh, that's another reason why I'm doing this video here, to just hope that some people can see this and maybe they can see some of themselves and some of whatever's going on around them that I see now at a later age, like, oh, that's why that is the way it is. Or you were unconsciously trained to do this, that's why you sought out that behavior, those type of people, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, there, there, there's positives and negatives to this, too. I mean, it's, if, you, if you're codependent with someone, you have a, you know, somewhat, somewhat of a mutual neutrality or some mutual push-pull shit with them, it can be great. But, you know, if you got it with someone that's just uh, siphon bleeding you all the time, it's just, you get around a juice soon, man. It's, uh, fuck. All right, so back to the notepad, to my own notes, because I, I got this. If I don't look at the pad, I'll start telling a, you know, another story for an hour. Okay, and I want to stay on topic and talk about the other airport thing, too. That's important. So, um, born to serve, trained to serve. In marriage, you will seek out someone to take care of. But if you can't, what my notes say here? But if you can't take, oh, okay, it says that if somebody can't take care of themselves, then they're a liability to themselves and other people. So basically, uh, you got to carry your own weight in life. And if, if someone, if your partner or significant other or whatever, they're not at least, it's bad enough they're not helping you to enrich your own life. But if they're not helping themselves, then you're picking up their slack. Then they're like, you know, they're, they're trudging you down or they're holding you down and you're not growing to your potential because you got somebody else that's like a draw on you. It's like having extra shit hooked up to the battery in your car. It's like you hook up another radio and this and that and before you know it, the motherfucker don't want to start for you because you got too much shit that's drawing on the battery current. So you've only got 12 volts or 13 volts or some shit like that. Use it wisely. You know, that's all. Yeah. So... You might have to get rid of that stereo or amp or whatever the fuck, just in favor of getting the car to crank. So, uh, what else? Well, my notes, if you can't take care of the liability to themselves, everyone around you. Yeah, um, just closing out, just you got to retrain your brain. Um, that was my main synopsis point of the notes I took on this uh, little module or some shit that I watched. So, yeah. You take care of me, codependence, raise codependence, and now I have the answer as to why uh, in the past I sought out people who were needy or in need of being fixed or in need of being repaired, like a salvage title car. You don't have to drive salvage title cars around all your life. You can if you want to, but I mean, it's, uh, there are better cars available. I mean, there isn't <laughs> more than salvage ones available to you, I'm just saying. So, uh, yeah, the world's a big place. Anyway, uh, yeah, you take care of me, and that's what we're going to end that on. Okay, so I'm going to cut this file here, and we're going to go to part two about the, uh, the airport story. Yeah, that, that's great, man. Okay, cut.